This tutorial is on the topic of indirect proof and we'll start with an analogy at first before we get into what the steps of an indirect proof are and then a couple of examples. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's fictional character Sherlock Holmes was very famous for saying that after we have eliminated the impossible whatever remains no matter how improbable must be the truth. And this idea of proving something by eliminating possibilities is really what indirect proof is all about. And um, a couple of uh, uh, careers or occupations that use this concept are actually auto mechanics and general physicians. And that's how they diagnose problems, either in your, your vehicle or in, in your body. Um, a general physician might come in and you tell them your symptoms and they say, well, it can't be this and it can't be this and it can't be this and it can't. So they rule out things and what's left is the diagnosis. And uh, very similar with an auto mechanic. Now, many proofs are, are called direct proofs, where you begin with some facts and you logically reason to prove a, a conclusion true. Sometimes it is difficult to prove something true directly. And it, this is, indirect proofs often used when you're trying to prove things are not equal. In these cases, it might be easier to prove all of the possibilities cannot be true and then the remaining one is true. Now, in an indirect proof, and I'll take a look at the steps on the next page, you begin with uh, the statement of what you're trying to prove and its opposite. And in the two examples we'll take a look at, there's only two possibilities. Like these two things are equal or they're not equal. Uh, it could be an indirect proof that there could be more than two possibilities. Maybe there's four or five. And so you prove that there's five, you prove there's four that can't be, so the remaining one is true. And you start the proof after, um, uh, after listing those. Uh, you as make an assumption that you um, you assume the statement you want to prove true is false, and then the opposite is true. So if you want to prove two things are equal, you start by uh, assuming that they're not equal. Okay, you you start by assuming that the opposite is true of what you want to prove, and you show that that assumption leads to a false to, to a false statement or a contradiction of some known fact. And so since there's a contradiction, the assumption has to be false, so the opposite has to be true. Those are the basic steps to an indirect proof, and we'll take a look at those in two examples. So the one on this page, we're given that uh, AB is greater than AC, and we're told that DE and AC are parallel. You're asked to use an indirect proof to show, to proof to show that angle DBE, which would be this angle here, is not equal to angle DEB. These, so these two angles are not the same. So we start by listing all possibilities. Either those two angles are equal or they're not equal. That's all possibilities. Either these two angles are the same or these two angles are different. So we want to prove that they are not equal. So we're, we'll start with uh, making the assumption that those two angles are equal. And we'll show that that leads to a contradiction of a known fact. So then the assumption has to be false and then the opposite is true. So we'll start by assuming that these two angles are the same. So that would mean that this angle and this angle are the same. Now, because of the fact we're told that DE is parallel to AC, that means that angle ACB, which would be this one, would have to equal angle DEB, which is this one. So I could put the same mark up here because, because, those, because of the fact that DE and AC are parallel, that means that those two angles have to be equal. Now, so this would mean that angle DBE, this one here, and ACB have to be equal. So notice I've got uh, three um, symbols the same, or angles here. Uh, from our assumption, we assume that those two are equal. Because the parallel lines here, these two are equal. So that means that this angle and this angle would have to be equal because those two angles are both equal to angle DEB, this one here. So these two angles would have to be the same. So those two angles are the same. So if those two angles are the same, that means in the entire ABC triangle, it has to be isosceles, because an isosceles triangle is a triangle with two equal angles. So here comes the contradiction. So in the uh, so we have an isosceles triangle, and in an isosceles triangle we have two equal sides. The sides opposite the equal angles, so AB is opposite that angle, 
Okay. And uh, this angle's opposite side is the AC side, so those two sides would have to be equal because the triangle is isosceles. So I said, here comes our contradiction. We are told, however, and this is a known fact from the beginning of the question, that AB is supposed to be longer than AC. That's given. Okay. So this known fact contradicts that, and that was... Uh, came from a conclusion that those two are the same and that was based really right back to the beginning on the assumption. Only because of the assumption can we reason through this that AB and AC are the same, uh, but of course they're not, that's a contradiction. So this whole proof is hinged upon whether DBE and DEB are equal. So like everything else is logically consistent. So because this contradiction uh, but it contradicts the uh, the assumption we had at the beginning. So these two angles cannot possibly be equal, so the opposite has to be true. So the assumption that we made back here has to be false because it led to a contradiction of a known fact. So the opposite is true. So angle DBE cannot be equal to DEB. So that's how an indirect proof works. You list all possibilities, state the opposite of what you want to prove, show that it leads to a contradiction, and then so the opposite's true. One more example on the last page here. Uh, definition, a scaling triangle is a triangle that has no equal sides. And so what we want to prove now is that a scaling triangle also has no equal angles. So we're given that the triangle is scaling. That's our given here. There's no equal sides. AC and AB and BC are all of different lengths. So, let's prove that uh, angle B and angle C cannot be equal to one another. So, uh, by indirect proofs, we would start by listing the two possibilities. Either angle B and C are equal, or they're not equal. Now, we want to prove they're not equal, so we're going to show that we're going to start by assuming that they are equal, and show that that leads to a contradiction. So, we'll assume that angles B and C are equal. That's our assumption. Now, if those two angles are equal, that would mean that triangle ABC is isosceles. And then side AC and, and uh, AB would have to be equal. If those two are, angles are equal, then these two sides would be equal. Well, that contradicts the fact that the triangle is supposed to be scalene. So we're told that it's scalene, so AB and AC cannot be equal. But the, this um, deducing they're equal was based on whether B, uh, the angle B and angle C are equal. So this, <coughs> excuse me, this, the fact that they're scaling and we know those two sides are not equal uh, means that that assumption has to be false. Okay, so the opposite is true. So angles B and C could not possibly be equal. So the assumption is false, so angle B and angle C are not the same. And very similarly, we could prove that uh, um, angle A and C are not the same, and also angle A and B are not the same, and so that means that there's no equal angles. So that's, that's the idea in an indirect proof. Show that your assumption, you assume the opposite of what you want to prove true, show your assumption leads to a contradiction, and then the opposite is true. And that's the end of the tutorial.